one victory here over the Duke Blue Devils. And coach, congratulations. Uh, let's start with the seventh inning there, as this game was in the balance for the majority of this run. It starts with Alec Makarevich getting the walk, and then Bryson with the hard hit ball pass first, and that allows you to start spinning the wheels there, doesn't it? It does, but the, the game was Cam Colmore coming in, and when Spivey got the blister on his finger, Spivey actually – Dealt with that the weekend before last weekend um, a little bit, and we shut him down. And it's just, you know, it's going to be something that we're going to have to manage a little bit. But Cam Colmore not even being throwing and going out there and just calming the storm. Of course, you know, they got a run. And then what C.J. Mayhew did, uh, that's the best he's ever pitched. You know, he's always had great fastball. But tonight he had to slaughter the changeup and just special. I mean, that was not the plan for him to finish it. It was just he made us let him finish it. Clip. Let's go to the offense. Francisco and Norby led a barrage of pirate offense today. Yeah, Norb's seeing the ball good. You know, Norb's a pretty quiet guy. Doesn't say a lot. Uh, really talented. Uh, Franny is one of our leaders, and he's the guy that's in the thick of things. And um, you know, he's he's like Burley, where you know they put a shift in, then he'll just you know he'll hit the ball to the left side. He got a change up and was able to get just enough of it for a three-run jack, three big two-out RBIs right there after we had scored one to put us up 3-1. Uh, Lane Hoover with a great hit and run. So, really, I, I thought that we played really good down the stretch. You know, the seventh on, I thought we played really good. I thought that we kind of played lackadaisical when we got up to nothing. I just told the offense that we can't let somebody else's energy, whether it's good or bad, let us fade. So, but really proud – we talked about before the game, finishing games to the end, and I thought our guys finished tonight. The two pitchers that you mentioned, Colmore and, and C.J. Mayhew, they had to deal with some traffic as well. Duke had runners on from the second to the seventh in every inning. They had chances to tie this game or even take the lead. And for them to show the wherewithal, one a six-year guy, the other a second-year guy, to leave those situations out there, and give this team's offense an opportunity to have that big inning that it did. That's just something that you expect from those guys, but it was great to see on a stage like this against a, one of the nation's best teams. Yeah, Cam and I, we just briefly spoke, and Cam, Cam's a stud. You know, he's like family now, being here six years. Uh, but he, he didn't have his best stuff tonight, and, and I thought he just – he kind of weathered the storm, uh, you know, hung a breaking ball to one of the best players. He hits a double, RBI, Mayhew – uh, got better as it went on. I thought the eighth and the ninth inning was as good as his first two innings, if not better, uh, really better, in my opinion. And he was good. He was dominant. It's good. I'm glad that he's on our team, an extremely competitive young man who uh, just is not afraid. And we're glad he's on our team. Coach, heck of a win here tonight. It was a pleasant night at the yard, and your team came out uh, blasting away here to start, and you're 4-0. So congratulations, and we will talk to you in Statesboro. All right. Thanks, Corey. Thanks, Coach O. Okay, we will open it up to questions for Coach Godwin now. Coach, you mentioned, you know, obviously it wasn't a plan for Mayhew to go that long, but what are those conversations like? Are there any conversations when he's rolling like that between you and Dietrich in between uh, innings? Well, between Coach Dietrich, Coach Knight, myself, there's a lot of conversations. But Mayhew gets by so fast he doesn't because he doesn't want to come out of the game. So he runs by us so we can't take him out of the game. Um, and he was rolling, and he looked at me like I was crazy when I said, hey, can you finish this thing? He just said, yeah, and just kept moving. So, um, And that wasn't the plan, to be honest with you. Like I said, it was not the plan. We were hoping that we probably could get to the seventh with him. If we could get through the seventh, that would be great. And then we were going to turn it over to Bridges and – A.J. Wilson and Sailor and Ryder Giles and those guys. Coach, you're able to – Quality win is a uh, – go ahead, Ron. <laughs> when you're able to do that in a, a week like this, obviously, um, you're about to go on a series. I mean, how important is that to use your two best guys or two of your best guys and that's it in a win in a game like this? I don't know if it's good hey, – Ron, I don't know if it's good or bad. We'll find out Friday night. Uh, I'm sure – Mayhew, he, he always wants to pitch, so I'm sure he won't, he will want to be hot on Friday night, which I don't see that happening. Uh, Cam's arm mounts his back pretty good, but probably not available on Friday night. Uh, you know, it, really, the way the game, I mean, look, he, he, Spivey was supposed to go a few innings, and for him not to be able to do that and then only use two pitchers really is surprising. 
Um, not surprising with the guys that went out there. I mean, we started Mayhew in the fall, uh, and we actually started him, I think, the first weekend of, of the spring, and then we just started putting him on two different days. Uh, but he, you can see that he could start um, if he goes out there and pitches like that. Cliff, with Spivey's blister, is it a case where you guys might just have to shut him down for a bit to get it fully healed? Yeah, I don't know. It didn't look bad tonight on the mound, but he just said he couldn't feel he couldn't feel the baseball as well as he needed to. And in that situation, I don't think it was fair to him to have to try to maneuver through Duke's lineup, especially first and second, two outs. Just so went to somebody that was not uh, or was 100 percent healthy. And we'll look at it. Womack was working on it, you know, even after the game. So we'll get him right. Coach, how nice was it to see Josh Moylan break through with a couple hits today and obviously the big homer? Just what do you think that's going to do for his confidence moving forward? Well, look, uh, baseball is a game of failure. So uh, it definitely, I'm sure it feels good to him to get that first one out of there. Uh, Josh is an unbelievable hitter. Uh, he has really not looked like himself until tonight, to be honest with you. And him and I have had a lot of conversations about some things and the way he, um, you know, this timing and just how high his leg lift has been and stuff. And with the pitching that we have faced, it's, it's been hard on him. And um, tonight it was great to see him, you know, he got a change up up and was able to elevate it out of the yard. It was great to see. You get 10 hits, six runs, quality opponent, uh, a bit of a resume builder bracket wise come the end of the year could be, uh, you got to feel good about the way things went today. I'm glad we won. Duke's a very good opponent. Uh, I don't know about resume builder. We're a long ways from that. So we could be shut down tomorrow with COVID. Who knows? So uh, we're just taking it day by day. Uh, I want our guys to get better. I want them to stay hungry. I want them to stay humble and keep doing the things that have put us in a situation to be 4-0. And, and as soon as we take our foot off the gas pedal, then we'll get punched in the mouth and we'll lose and we won't play well. And Georgia Southern's really good. I don't know if they played today or not, but they lost to Tennessee in 12 innings one game, and then uh, Tennessee hit a three-run jack in the ninth, I think, one game as well. And they've got everybody back that they had last year, and I thought their pitching was the best pitching staff we faced non-conference-wise last year, plus they've got a freshman that starts on Saturday that has been up to 97. So we're going to have our hands cut out for – or our hands full and our work cut out for us this weekend. So – but that's – on Friday, we're going to enjoy this one. Uh, I'm trying to do a better job of enjoying it, and uh, we're going to enjoy this one. I'm, I'm happy for our guys. I'm happy for our fans, and I'm just happy for East Carolina. Coach, can you talk about the status of Gavin? Will he be available this weekend against Georgia Southern? Uh, right now, that's the plan. He's going to throw another bullpen uh, tomorrow. Uh, he feels good. Uh, I told uh, somebody the other day it was long tossing. I said, I bet those message boards, I goes got going, is blowing up. Gavin Williams is long tossing at about 300 yards. So, I'm sure everybody was talking about that. That's the, hey, the good scoop. So, uh, I'm happy for Gavin. I'm glad he's feeling good, but we still got to take it day by day and make sure that we're keeping his future in mind. And, and that's the, that's the first and that's the first thing that we've got to do is keep his health in mind. He wants the ball, he wants to pitch. And he's kind of like a bull. We got to hold him back to just make sure he's ready to go. Good. All right, we're going to go to questions to Thomas. Well, Thomas, uh, we'll start first with your big at bat in the seventh. Um, kind of walk us through that and, and what you saw and how you're able to hit that home run. Oh uh, yeah, so you know we got that inning started with uh, the AMAC walk, and then uh, Hoover had a big hit and run there. They got us on the board and, you know, Coach G just told me to uh, look for first pitch change up. And luckily he threw that pitch in it. Uh, the ball snuck out. Um, but I think the biggest thing today was just, uh, you know, with, when Spivey went down unexpectedly, um, you know, Cam and Mayhew and came in and just shut the door. And uh, I think that was the biggest thing uh, tonight. for that home run obviously is a kind of a huge pivotal point in the game just uh how did that feel kind of rounding first base and when that thing got over yeah you know it, it's a good feeling anytime you can uh help put your team in position to win a game you know that's what we want to do but there were a lot of big moments that happened you know before that pitch that went into helping us win the game 
Thomas, how did it feel with you guys having the with the guys with the with Colmore and when you also have CJ Mayhew that are pitching lights out? Does that guy does that help you guys have uh, more confidence and less pressure when it comes to the, the, the bats? Oh, for sure. You know, uh, we love playing defense behind those guys. And, you know, that's why that's why they're out there, because we trust them so much. And, uh, you know, they showed you what they could do tonight. How cool was it to see Josh uh, Moylan hit his first home run as a freshman and uh, make it to the, the football practice? Field? Oh, yeah, it was awesome. You know, uh, that guy has a really bright future. He's a great player. And, uh, you know, we're excited for, for what he has. Did you think yours was gone off the bat when you hit it, or were you kind of unsure? Oh, I, th- I thought that uh, I thought it was either going to get robbed or it was going to get out one or the other. So <laughs> luckily, it got out. I know this is it's still four games into the season, but it's Duke, it's in-state team. Both teams are ranked. I mean, does this feel like a big win? Or obviously, you know, there's some some emphasis behind getting a win like this. Uh, yeah, it's a big win, but you know, we try to treat every game, uh, you know the same we don't change anything up we're really playing ourselves and i thought we did a good job tonight